gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the CP Podcast. Uh, the podcast named after CP. We start on CP time. Uh, we talk about the shit CP likes. You know, and 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 we are we we are never closing our minds to to the questions, and we completely understand that we may not ever receive the answers. But it is the it is the pursuit of the knowledge that makes living worthwhile. To my right, as always, uh, the knight in the fight against what's right or wrong, my Valentino. Hello, everybody. The man who has more black clothes than uh, than Death himself. <laughs> he be at Target like, hey, Grim, can you fit this? Grim be like, let me see that. Turn it around. That's nice. Oh, my <laughs> God. I could take so many souls. So many souls in this hoodie. What is that, a cash money hoodie? I could take so many souls. And then we got a special guest. Tony Valentino, hello, uh, co-executive producer of Maya's new baby. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so I'm very excited about this episode, and we asked Tony to come into this episode because when I get to talking about crazy conspiracies that make me excited and scare me and keep me up at night, and Maya is like, "There's no monsters under your bed," and I'm like, "But it's so fun to have monsters under the bed." And, you know, I know that Tony shares my fascination with some of these things, particularly flat earth. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with what flat earth means, let me just run you through a little bit about uh, what I've been able to understand about what the flat earthers, how they feel and what they think. First of all, they think that we are on a big ass pizza (laughs) and, um, you know, it's like a pizza with a bowl of chili under it and a glass microwave bowl on top of it. Um, it's very interesting. A couple of things that I've thought about, right, which is, first of all, they think that um, we can't go to space by going straight up. Uh, they think that that's impossible. Flat Earthers believe that, really, the way to get to space is through deep water so that you go deep enough into the ocean to come out of the bottom of the bowl and that's how you really get into space. They also talk about how seeing ships and things in the sky, how they kind of look like boats in the water because to them we are surrounded on all sides um, by water. Water is what space is to them, technically from what I've been able to understand. And also that there's a wall around the continents that we know and then behind that is where all the wild things are. Right. So you think about um, uh, Game of Thrones. Right. And how beyond the wall, they talk about um, the old, the old people, the old, you know, the old time, you know, like things that we think to be exist. Right. From dragons to dire wolves to zombies, to anything that a folklore, you know, you're talking about Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Organism 46B, all these things that are, quote unquote, beyond uh, our scope of what we understand land masses to be. Uh, rumor has it that there are land masses beyond that wall that are just as big as the United States. Um, that these flying saucers that we keep seeing, the aliens that we think we know of, are really those people or those beings that are beyond the wall that are all encompassed inside of Earth. We're all sharing Earth with these. There are no extraterrestrial Right. There are hidden terrestrial creatures as what they would like to explain it. Um, Mm. And it sounds cool as fuck. (laughs) Uh, This is the type of shit that I scare myself at night thinking and talking about. And I just want to, you know, really just kind of let's just let's let's really dive in. We have some flat earth graphics on the screen. And um, yeah, if you Google flat earth beyond the ice wall, you'll kind of see. Flat Earth beyond the ice wall. You kind of see. What... Let me let me get to that flat Earth because what you're talking about in all these like mythical lands that's been going on in myths for centuries, a long long time. You know, people, you know, think that there's gonna be Shangri La, Hyperborea, with like these kings and stuff. I, I recently did a, a video on um, on occult Russia, and they have a lot of fantasy stuff beyond the ice wall, and it's, I mean it's fun. Yeah, this will give you a good idea of like what what the flat Earth map looks like because for me, I always I remember hearing you know the flat Earth shit right, mm-hmm. and then 
it really sort of made sense. It didn't make sense. For the record, I'm not a flat earth person. But <laughs> what I, I when I started to like find where it's fun is when I saw a map of flat earth for the first time. Right. And when they, because you're like, well, we know the earth's round, right? Like we have airplanes and shit. Like how right, many that people. can't see. Right. That right. horizons drop off in right. any way yeah. that you look. So I'm like, you're telling me every pilot. In the world. Is in on it. Is in on the secret. Right. But then their response to that is the map that you can see. And they're like, well, the pilots don't necessarily have to know because they're still flying these routes, right, that they think they're flying. It's just when you look at the flat earth, if you're just listening, if you look at the flat earth map, it's sort of laid out like the North Pole is in the center and then everything else sort of splays out from there. Right. You can Google it. Everybody knows what we're talking about. Right. But taking a plane from North America where we would think as a globe person, we're going over the North Pole, over to China, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're still doing the same, you're still going the same direction as if the world was a globe. So, right. and I think that's why I like, that's why I've like ruined my Twitter. My entire Twitter is flat earth shit now. <laughs> like really? All, yes. Yeah, I've completely destroyed my algorithm. I don't want to say what my, my algorithm shows. <laughs> the... What I think is interesting and why I like it is like sometimes I'll just be scrolling through flat earth shit and I'll be like, huh, that is an interesting way to look at the world, right? Yeah. Like when they talk about uh, something that seems to be really hot in the flat earth uh, Twitter verse right now is um, they talk about water level, right? Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Where they're like, you could do an experiment, put water in a, in a, in a Coke bottle, right? Turn it kind of on its side, put them at different levels or whatever. The water always hits a level. Yeah. And well, it's called a level. That's what, how a level, a leveler works when you're building a house. Yeah. So it's they're right. saying, Concept. so the, the idea is that we're on a globe, but there's no, it's not coming to a level. And then you got to think about, well, if that, that's not how grab like gravity on that scale. Yeah. The earth is huge. Right. They think the earth is like tiny. So a, a cool experiment would be, and I think we talked about this. They say there's like a drop off in the curvature every three miles. It drops like a couple, like a foot. Right? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, that. you can Google so that. Like, like that almost. Like it keeps. Right? Yeah, there's like the, the elevation. Elevation. The the curve will adjust your line of sight by a foot every three miles or something like that. Right? So if you could get like an ant farm that was three miles long, <coughs> right? Then fill that with water. Use a laser level to see if the water is perfectly straight. Right, then you're showing you there is that, no curvature. There's no curvature, right? But then you got to make an ant farm three miles long. But they <laughs> they did this experiment, and this is actually this is actually uh, funny and sad. Um, they did this experiment right here where they tried to do that, and these dudes were like, so we're watching a YouTube video right now, and basically these dudes were trying to do that experiment where they're trying to go straight across, and because they were trying to prove flat Earth. Right, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Well, this guy's gonna have to lift up his his light if the Earth is a globe. If the Earth is a globe, and he did have to lift up his light. Right. So what what, what the oh, experiment shit. was? Yeah, <laughs> they this was from wrong. yeah they they prove themselves wrong every time they do an experiment, pretty much. But it's from uh, because beyond the curve, right? Beyond the curve. The documentary. Oh my god! So the experiment so is if you're on a completely flat surface, right, like a mm -hmm. body of water, and you put Two boards with holes cut in exactly the same, uh, like exactly at like five feet, right? Mm -hmm. And they are two miles apart. And then you put somebody with a with a camera on one end that can kind of look through both holes. They can see both, right? Yep. And then somebody on the other end with a flashlight, right? right? So, in theory, camera shooting right into those two holes. If the Earth is flat, it should be straight. They can hold the flashlight at five feet, and they should be able to see it. Here's the thing, though. I think <clears throat> people get flat and even confused, mm. Mm. right? Because I think that there is no terrain that is even, mm -hmm. even if it's flat. But that's yeah. why they use water. So bodies of water are level flat. out. They're right? level. flat no yeah. matter what yeah. because but, they're mutable. Right. So in the experiment that they're doing where they prove themselves wrong, if the earth, if, if it's flat, hold the flashlight at five feet, aim it at those holes, camera should be able to see the light but that that's not how it worked because they were so far away he had to hold the light at like 
10 feet to see it through the holes because the curvature of the earth is making it so that he was lower than the holes at right. five yeah. feet. But see, that's the thing, though. That's not using water. See, that's my problem. It's like, it's so hard to... Like, okay, remember when the guy jumped from the Red Bull thing? He went so high up, and it was like the highest jump ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, what did he see? See, like, people who talk about this flat earth shit are, they're always going to point out that the firmament is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And they talk about the firmament. Ah, see, Maya's already getting frustrated. <laughs> they talk about the firmament in the Bible, you know, the and 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 it's just like... Well, this is what he saw. So we're looking at the Red Bull jump. We're looking at the Red Bull jump right mm -hmm. now, and wait, you see. We I imagine see, if you could talk to him, he would say that he... he sees the curvature. Is that the moon that he's seeing, or is it the Earth? I don't know. Oh, that's oh, him he falling. ain't seeing shit, that's right? I'm sure he fell asleep <laughs> two times when this. Uh, that's probably the best sleep ever, too. Just falling free. <laughs> Oh, that's I hard. would be like, oh man, I would, you know, I would at least take a two, 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 three minute nap. How long did it take you to fall to the earth? From that height, I think it probably took him like three minutes. Is this for a four minute video? Let's see. Oh god, oh god. Bro, yeah. I would, I would be so nauseous. There's no way. There's no <laughs> way. You think you'd be nauseous? Bro, yes. Oh yeah. Imagine a roller coaster that just keeps going. You're going to drop roller coaster. And you're going extremely dropping. fast, and you're spinning around. But after after a couple of seconds, oh yeah, and, and he's fucking spinning out of control. Yeah. There's yeah, no sense of horizon. Spinning. You're just in the air. Yeah, I'd like, be nauseous as fuck. Yeah, I would need them to put like a stabilizer on me. Like, dude, make me fall at least flat more so than twisting around. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, I'm getting dizzy looking at this shit. <laughs> now, but this is interesting because the flat earth people would say, like, that's clearly a fisheye lens, right? And so I was, was going to say, like the, the, I mean, is that, I mean, it looks like a fisheye lens because as it's turning, the angles are like, you see that? The yeah. angles are like, in and out of yep. the circle of the earth. Yeah, it's all over the place. But they they would say that it's being purposefully fish-eyed to make it look like the earth is a sphere, right? Like they they see that as a conspiracy. Like the only images we see from space are with fish-eye lenses. Yeah. Um but that doesn't necessarily have anything to do like it's not a conspiracy. It's like that camera has to be strapped to him and actually see parts of him. So like it has to be a Let me ask lens. you guys a question. Is a is a planetary property for every planet to be bulbous? Yes. Every single one? Yeah, because gravity. The nature of gravity is that it's going to suck things toward the center. So it's not a perfect sphere, but it's close. Yeah. Every single planet that... So there is no planetary... There is no way that a planet could be... It's like, like, like a big glass ball is just like, bro, we just made glass, didn't we? Like who the fuck? It's what naturally. company did that? Oh, you can, you can, you can make. Uh, wh what are you talking about? I'm saying like the idea that the world is in a fishbowl. Oh, it's like who is making <laughs> <Right>. the glass? <laughs> well, they they would say God and all who these did, things. Who, who did God? So God, so God is like, hey, I got this thing I'm working on. It's uh, it's huge, and I, and, and you know what I'm saying. I need you to bring. <laughs> The biggest glass bubble that we could possibly find. I want the world. To, I want to look like a Reebok pump. <laughs> over, it's just like that's the part that really scares me. That people are wasting time thinking things like this, but then they prove it, and they, it's like they they suck me back in with like a one percent fat, which is all I need sometimes. It's a one percent fat. Whoa, 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 wait, what? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. There's an ice wall. Here I go. I'm back in. But it's like, all I know is that I've never seen a planet other than a picture. And that inside of myself would not allow me to discard information that is contrary to that belief. What see, about a telescope? You can get a telescope and you can see. Yeah, we saw, we, we actually found uh, Saturn. Yeah, it's Saturn. We saw on a Jupiter telescope that we bought, went, set up. Yeah, like yeah. all the set. I, all I can see is like my neighbor's living room from my telescope. I'd be like, these <laughs> dirty motherfuckers. Nah, no, I'd be trying to find a little shit. I was, I went to the top of a tree one time. I'm like, man, that tree looked right here. But it's like, I can't. I mean, the moon, and, and I got like different little lenses. I spent some nice little like couple hundred dollars on one, and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like this shit is just like you know. 
I don't know. Like, have you guys seen the uh, the map of the the moon overlaid over Earth yeah, and yeah, how yeah. the continents and the bruises on the moon kind of line up to that? It's like, here we go, sucking me back in. Well, church don't even have overlays. They don't even <laughs> they ain't even show you overlays in church. They just be like, believe it, and that's it. You got to leave. These motherfuckers coming with overlays. Well, that's, I mean, Flat Earth is interesting because it sort of has to encompass a lot of other conspiracy theories, right? Like, right. There's so much about the moon. Like, the moon, I have made people very uncomfortable talking to them about the moon. The moon is weird. It's I'll give, weird. I'll give the you moon the moon is, very is a little weird. weird. Definitely there's, uh, there's something we got to think about on the moon. So the moon, the moon is tidally locked. So we only ever see one side of the moon, right? It is exactly the right size to perfectly eclipse the sun. Yeah. It is the largest moon that we've ever observed in the universe. Well, it's also, I mean, it's, in we're, relation just, to the planet. We're, we're just now observing other moons. We're, we were observing the moons in the solar system. Right. And now we get the technology to observe moons, moons in the universe. But too. I think even still, it's the biggest moon we've ever seen in relation to the size of the planet. Of course. It I is. mean, well, but, but it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, like saying... Earth is small. Right. It's, it's like it's actually very small. close to us. And, and they're saying like, Jupiter has moons that are way bigger than Earth. Sure. Right? But Mars, which is a similar size to Earth, it's a little smaller. Right. It has two moons, and those moons are a 15th the size of our moon in comparison to the planet. But they're like, also saying time. that there's a, there's a ghost moon that's following our moon. Have y'all seen that? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? What? No, they're saying not. it's a... Okay, look. They're saying that the little moon that you see at like 3 p.m. sometimes mm -hmm. is a moon that has been pulled into our moon's orbit and is actually mimicking, like following our moon. I thought that was just our moon. No, they're saying that's, 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 that's the other moon. Because think about it. There'll be days where you see that moon in the daytime, then the nighttime, you'll see a way bigger moon. Yeah, I think it depends on where it is in the sky. Right. But I'm just saying, like, you know, it's like, I look at those moons, like, remember on uh, Full House, when you'd be like, is that Mary Kate or is that Ashley? Because <laughs> they, they're just swapping them out. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so let's, let's research it. They said that there's, they found that there might be a little moon that's following our big moon that looks just like our moon, and it's kind of just been pulled in. Because what is a moon anyway? What is a moon? So is, that's is, the thing. And they also are moon. Uh, ghost moon. <laughs> ghost moon. Bam. Ghost moon. They also looked at uh, when when we were on the moon, I believe. We had all these um, we had all these measuring devices, if you think we ever went to the moon. I don't think we ever went to no goddamn moon. But they say <laughs> the an footprints. asteroid hit the moon, and it rang like a bell for like a they did long what? time. It rang. What, wait, they did, an what asteroid hit the moon. Okay. And the moon vibrated and rang like it was a bell, which gets into hollow moon theory, right? Did you ever see Moonfall? Hell no. Nah. Moonfall, Moonfall is a terrible movie. Horrible movie. Definitely watch it. It's a really good time. Horrible movie. Watch it. <laughs> but that is the hollow moon theory that the moon is either a spacecraft placed here by something. Um, because when you look at the distance it is from the the Earth, it's like and how it perfectly eclipses the sun. Yeah, it's almost like it's that's crazy, man. Well, you yeah. can either believe we didn't go to the moon, or you can believe the Earth, or the moon rang. You can't believe both. That's things. right, and that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like you know the footprints didn't match up. Well, they they get pissed off. I know what you're talking about. I know what they you're get, about. When you ask them, what the fuck do you think, man? You see them old man be like, sir, did you really go to What do you think, man? We went to the moon, man. It's fucking crazy, man. It's a fucking in and out up there. You don't know shit. I don't have to answer your questions. You'd be like, wait a minute, sir. We, you do got to answer the questions. I could get behind that we didn't go to the moon, but not because the moon isn't real or because space isn't real, but because we're, we, we're there was an incentive. With the Russians yeah, there was an incentive the yeah. for us to make the Russians spend feel a bunch like, of money yeah. and look like shit. For us to get to the moon. A lot of people that I think are the more reasonable conspiracy people think we didn't get to the moon when we said we went to the moon. Did you, um, what about those satellites that they got images of getting shot down, trying to put them into the, so they have images of um, one of the moon, I mean, one of the uh, satellites we sent was like Photog something, and it was like start with a P, and they sent it up there and they lost communication with it. Mm -hmm. So they made a sequel. You know how they do like with the satellites, like Apollo 2, Apollo 3. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they made another one. They sent it up there and it got, before it lost 
they said like a like a some kind of sorceress thing and an energy weapon destroyed it. But who said this? Yeah, who said that? I'm about to find it right now. See if you can find it. Uh, I just want to say that this looks like it's some sort of atmospheric uh, uh, anomaly. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's not a... like an actual ghost moon. It's just it looks like there is one. And I don't think this is what you're talking about. What you're talking about is when you see the moon clearly at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the moon. That's the moon we're seeing. It's the other moon. It could be the other moon. It's not the other moon. We only have the one moon. <laughs> But see, like, Maya, how are you so sure? I have the telescope. I go I'm in just, there and looking man. at the telescope. I mean, there's a bunch of, you can go and look at pictures, but you can look at on your own. If you go to a place that's not LA, it hasn't doesn't have this much light right. pollution. Right, but I'm just saying, like, how do we know that there's not, like, the moon didn't have a baby or something is coming out? Like, shit goes, they, they, they talk about shit going into the moon. Like, they have little images, quote unquote, of stuff going up to the moon and seemingly the moon opening up and letting them go in it. Like what Tony said makes sense. Like it's so close that it could really be a control center. It could you know I cannot rule that out completely. Like the moon is interesting. It's kind of like fairly perfect. Yeah. It is yeah. it's weirdly perfect. So I mean yeah, I can't rule it out completely, but and it lights well, up. I can rule out that we have another one. See, but that okay. You just said <laughs> it lights up. It lights up. I've seen. I've seen so much because that's the other thing, right? If if the Earth is flat, the Moon is probably not what we think of the, as the Moon, like a, right. a planetary body. It's probably a light, right? right? That's what they all say. And then they show these pictures of like the photos apparently from the Moon, and then the Moon from like the dark Earth or whatever. And it's like it's way brighter there and way darker there. I mean. That's just a exposure on the camera. So <laughs> like it's going to look different. They have images of people being able to see a star through the crescent. So like the, the moon is a crescent and it goes like this, right? Mm -hmm. And theoretically, the sphere of it should be like, um, like not opaque, but you solid. know, yeah, solid. Like you should, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. But then it's almost like, it's just it's like some weird shit going on with the moon, and I just doubt that people <laughs> fucking went there in the '60s with big ass black and white TVs. Like, no, because we can't do it now. The, Japan just like lost their landing craft that was supposed to be going to the moon. Yeah, today. But and it was there taking are, a there long were other time. other countries that have been that have sent um, landing craft to the moon since. Uh, yes. So Japan lost theirs, but and we've lost some going up to the moon. Yeah, it's just weird that it took as long as it did. To get there, and then they failed to land on the moon, which is something we did in the '60s without an iPhone. Like the I, feels what does odd. the iPhone do except give you me? I'm just saying the technolo it's, our technology it's, has advanced it's considerably. Rocket propulsion. We haven't we haven't advanced as far as that goes. We're That's still true. we're still using the same propulsion technology that we did in the '60s. Yeah, even Elon Musk is still using the same propulsion. We haven't figured that out. Can you see if there is a picture of a star through a crescent through the crescent moon? Just Google it. And the, not AI? Not AI or Photoshopped. <laughs> but that's also interesting, right? Like, I, I I look at a lot of these flat earth Twitter things. Oh, this is this is what you're thinking of. And it's it's not quite. Oh, it's right on the other side. Yeah. And that's probably yeah. a planet. Yeah, that is definitely a planet. Right. But, I mean, look at that one right there. Half moon. But why are there stars on the inside of that oh, right there? Oh, this is Photoshop. Yeah, that's, that's not real. That's Photoshop. Yeah, it don't even look like a real goddamn moon. That's <laughs> like a one of the Muslim hats. <laughs> Muslim <laughs> hats. You know, one of them Shriner hats. Yeah. We'd be like, oh, come on, man. But you look at these Twitter accounts, and you're like, they're they're posting things that are just clearly not true. And I'm a fairly open minded person, and I enjoy this. But then you you see the crazy shit that is also tied to the flat Earth community, like Tartaria, like we were talking about. Yeah, Tartaria. Mm -hmm. Just to fill people in, Tartaria is the idea that there was a really advanced civilization that covered the entire world up until 300 years ago when a mud flood affecting the entire world took it all out. So all of the buildings that we see are just the tips of the buildings and really underneath there are these elaborate buildings. And this right. happened 300 years ago when we have written evidence. Not even 300. But what, the is idea that, what does that sound like though? What's that? Planet of the Apes. The old one. <laughs> yes. We're, we're at the top of the... But it's like, it's like these things, I just, I don't believe that Hollywood is that smart. You know why I don't believe it's that smart? Because they keep redoing the same shit. Yeah. 
It's like, so they're not that bright to think that they're not coming up with new shit. They're just, you know, if there's a new Star Trek, there's a new Star Wars, there's a new Planet of the Apes, there's a new Little Mermaid, there's a new... It's like intellectual property is just redoing it, but it's like nothing has taken us above, you know, like the thought process that we've always already had. Well, in Tartaria, there's there's this idea that I actually do believe in, um, that when you look at the Sphinx in Egypt and the pyramids and stuff, that there is a lot of evidence that it's much, much older. Much older. There's water erosion on yeah. the Sphinx. Yeah. Sorry. There's water erosion on the Sphinx. So right. And, and, put it, and the head does not even fit the rest of the body, which right. less, leads us to believe that there was another civilization, civilization worshiping something else. Yep. And, you know, um, yeah, man. I just think that it's interesting that every single civilization has been trying to figure this shit out. Yeah. Well, because, and it doesn't make me feel good. Well, because this is how they navigated a lot of the time. So these ancient civilizations, they navigated by the stars. It's really important for them. And also to see when the seasons were coming. And also, if you go back into... If there was something coming from space, that could be a huge problem. Like an asteroid coming from space could destroy a civilization. So if there was even a tale of there's a star that fell to the sky, things like that, you got to look up at the sky and make sure there's not an asteroid coming. That did take out the dinosaurs. So for them, but but it's, it's not very just but it's not just the astrology. It's not just the seasons. It is the idea that there are visitors from the sky that they draw that they like to illustrate that they semi seemingly wanted to worship and it's the same thing with us we're telling the same stories just like with dragons we're yeah. still talking about dragons we're still talking about these mythological creatures that somehow we all think they look the same well they're a dinosaur they could have seen dinosaur bones someone could have unearthed dinosaur bones and be like what the hell is this it's right. a dragon but that's physical us, evidence but, they, but they're telling us that they were dinosaurs why weren't they dragons why weren't they really dragons when all we see is a skeleton? You can look at a gorilla's skeleton and it doesn't look special. It's big and fat than a motherfucker, but it doesn't look special, right? Until you see what really made it up and what it really was about. Like they they you know, they showed us this shit right in our face, these big ass T-Rex skulls and they tell us that it's a T-Rex, but we created what the fuck a T-Rex is. They weren't like there's no like uh, hieroglyphics that say T R E X. Well, like they we, uh, they can carbon date the bones. They can carbon well, date the bones and figure out how old they are. But they can't carbon name shit though. Like they no, can't. No, that that's a that's actually a big controversy within paleontology is because they'll find like someone will find a T Rex and someone will find a baby T Rex and everyone wants to say that they found a dinosaur. Right. So then a paleontologist will come out and say I found a different dinosaur. Yeah, it's a different developmental stage. There's yeah. a great TED talk. It's like the biggest nerd fight in the world because it's all these paleontologists and like. They they found a skull that looks slightly different from this other skull, so it's like okay, well this is the this is Brian Soros because my name is Brian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Everybody like, wants right. to get their but credit. See, the problem is, is that that becomes a story that's easily that's easy to sell. It's like just like the UFO shit, right? Like the military works on aircrafts that you know are anti gravity. The military is working on energy weapons, right? And so, but. The clout chasing thing to do is see something and be like, oh, that is a, you know what I'm saying? Like, like my dad said he saw like a, a fucking like a B-52 like in like Virginia or some shit like that as a truck driver. Just like, mm. like oh, that's a military plane, but it looks like some shit that somebody, if they saw that, the triangle, they, they would think, oh, this is, and it's hovering. Yeah. They would think that's a UFO. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for people to say it's a UFO than to say it's a A, Y, Z. And then the research is over. It's like, oh, yeah, that's what it, you know, it's like, it's just there are so many answers to questions that we don't even have the full question to already. But they like, but they got the answer. Well, the, and we'll go back to this. Probably have to do this next week because it's a big thing. And the UFOs are big now. Yeah, especially yeah. yesterday. You started to say yeah. yesterday. Yeah, crazy. we saw it. And it's all, the timing is, is convenient. I'll it's just say so it's, the convenient. The timing is convenient. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I do have to say, when we were talking about the PSYOPs on Twitter, mm -hmm. and psy PSYOPs are psychological operations, and they can be launched by anybody. It can be launched by another government, it can be launched by our government, it can be launched by individuals. So we see a lot of these, U uh, not UFO accounts, but flat earth accounts, and they overlap. And they just question everything. Right. This is the idea we have to question absolutely everything. And if they can come up with a question that most people don't know the answer to, they have this gotcha. Right. But 
really what they're trying to do is confuse people. And my question is, they're not making money on Twitter. Right. Like, there are these accounts that post thousands of times in a week. And they're not making money. They're just posting, like, memes of things. that like, well, isn't this crazy? They're lying to you about this. And a lot of them are just clearly fake. What so are they like, trying why? to do, though? Like, exactly. That's why? the question. Why? That's where we've gotten. That's, why are they doing that? Is it, is it, is it religion that, that they're trying to debunk? Well, a lot of them are religious. Like, there's a, there's a, it, that's actually good. That's a very good thought because a lot of them do tie back to some kind of religion. A lot okay. of flat earth yeah. is stems in, you know, that. So maybe it was in the Bible. Maybe they're trying to drive people back to church. I doubt it. There's I a lot of them. It. There's yeah. too much. It's, t- it's too much stuff. It right? seems like what they, my conspiracy theory is they're flooding Twitter and social media with uh, so much nonsense. That when an independent journalist or somebody does try to come up on Twitter and blow the whistle about something. Something real. Something real, which a lot of COVID stuff jumps to my head when we talk about that. Yeah. That you'll immediately, somebody who's not an insane conspiracy person, kind of a little bit like me, will just dismiss it. Because like, oh, that came off of Twitter. I saw something on Twitter yesterday where people couldn't figure out why the mirror could see an egg behind a piece of paper. Have you seen that shit? Oh, my God. Like. What is that? The mirror doesn't see shit. No. You see it you from see the it angle. You see it through the mirror. It's crazy. Yeah. Have you seen this? No, I, don't, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Oh, I'm going to send you this, my yes, other. I've got a few of these saved. But the, it's so crazy. The same, the same accounts, and I, I'm suspicious. I'm like, yo, I don't know. I don't doubt the pharmaceutical industry will do this. Because the same accounts that are flooding everything with flat earth and all this other stuff, they're also just like, oh, yeah. And they'll repeat something that it's like, wait a minute, that, that actually is kind of true. Like, Big Pharma did that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so now you're trying to say, so that someone who isn't in these circles, they don't really look at conspiracy stuff, that they will immediately dismiss everything they put on there. But why would they, why would a show like Game of Thrones that gets all of the, like they know how to make a show the hottest show. They know how to make it where everyone's watching this and everybody has, an, and this is like, and they draw so many parallels, so many parallels to there being an ice wall and beyond this ice wall, civilizations from the past that have the answers to what's really going on, you know, and it's just like. Well, they've been saying that there's that someone has the answers forever. <coughs> so, yeah, this kind of stuff this gets dude. caught up in the same Twitter, whatever. Like, I think the Flat Earth Zone or whatever retweeted this guy. Um, it's if you're only listening they're holding a piece of paper to a mirror. Behind the piece of paper is a, is like a cell phone charger. So if you're looking straight at the paper, you can't see the reflection of the cell phone charger. But if you peer over it a little bit, right, with the camera and change your angle, angle of viewing, you can see the charger. And what the and what the people on TikTok are saying is like, how does the mirror know there's a charger there? Which is just it 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 breaks my brain to try to wrap my head around like how you don't understand like, that. How do you how stupid do you have well, to be? They think this they think the mirror is a cell phone. This is what we've I think, giving them yeah. the most benefit of the doubt possible is that these this generation of people doesn't know the difference between a mirror and a cell phone. Right. And so they think this is a cell phone camera. Or a camera yeah, a camera reflecting the image back at you from a fixed angle. Yeah. Which, that's not what this is. So I'm like, the, a lot of the pages posting this, I'm like, you got to not actually believe that there's something weird about mirrors so let's, because of this. But let's this. break down what they think, though. Where's that, where's that Brock one? Brock what? It's, uh, oh, Brock. Oh, my God, what's his Cause name? Because that, that dude has got to be a psyop. Brock Law. Riddick. I saw Brock that Riddick about T-Rex having feathers now. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, come yeah. on, bro. Well, I mean, we've never seen one <clears throat> other than Bones, right? And we don't know so. what they sound like. Either. No, yeah. they don't know, know what they, they sound, sound like, like. but then they can recreate right. the larynx based on 3D imaging, quote unquote. Yeah, but we just know them as like these ferocious, crazy. They probably was just thing, birds. You know? But actually, Amir, before we move on, you're younger. You're younger yeah. than me by a lot. Speak for your generation. This is a TikTok fucking thing. <laughs> what the fuck? Mirror. How are people confused about how mirrors work? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it could be the phone thing, honestly. It's and, a good and, thought. and there's yeah. also been conspiracies about like how mirrors work. If you like, you put your finger on it, and then it's like how far your finger is from it. It'll let you know if that's actually a one way mirror or a two way two-way mirror. Yeah. Interesting. We got to lose Tony in a minute, guys. Yeah, gotta, 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 um, and, and, okay. So, okay. but yeah, look at this Brock Riddick guy. 
We're this is a psyop. This is controlled opposition. This is like a next level controlled opposition, right? Like because you've heard they the idea. You've heard the idea that Alex Jones is a controlled opposition agent, right? Who is Alex Jones? Uh, you don't know who Alex Jones is? Get out of here. Guys, I don't know these people by name. InfoWars. Info you know Alex Jones? I just be, I mean, look, people be white and black and <laughs> AI be like, oh, you talking about the black dude with the fro or the white dude with the, with the, with he the. He looks the... like a thumb. He's a, he's a Texas dude. He's, he's like. He gets, he, he gets hot, bro. He gets so mad. He is the thumb. face of conspiracy theory. It's crazy. Not the black dude. Which black dude? With the, no, no, I'm thinking about Neil. Mm. No, Neil deGrasse Tyson, no, InfoWars. Uh, oh, what was that? What's that? Uh, no, I saw like a little, it was like some UFO shit. I, I mean, hope you subscribe to this. This guy is definitely weird. He's either controlled opposition. He is, he's, it, it is a psyop, what he posts. It's just a wide range of just believe nothing. Right. Yeah. Which again, I think people like you and me, we appreciate that impulse. I appreciate that yeah. because I know that. Here's the thing: if if I could believe that we were always being told the truth, then I would be more inclined to brush off everything ridiculous. But it's so fucked up how they don't know and they fill in the holes like the dinosaurs with the feathers. We all watched Rats of Park in 1994, and they were big lizards. And they knew this so good. They knew it so Sus well suspected it. that it, it, it was almost like, all right, there are these big lizards that are like this. Then they got big uh, rhinoceros lizards that are kind of like, then they got the little, and it's like all of a sudden, now it's birds. Well, they they started knowing that in the '90s. They understood that birds. Uh, that birds were descendant of dinosaurs. It just well, wasn't good. Well, actually, for the, movie. the end of Jurassic Park ends on a bird. They know it was right. A bird. Yeah, they knew that it was a bird, but they didn't. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like we don't know, but we'll make a movie, and the movie will establish fact. And yeah. then now this is widespread fact that. Could itself be psyops. And, but I think the problem is in where it's probably that line of thinking is trying to be exploited. I think what these kind of pages are doing is they're saying like, well, they lied to you about that. They're probably lying about everything. Exactly. And if you think they're lying about everything, they can get away with anything. What about Which giants? True. What they, about they, giants, though? Well, here's off of what Tony was saying is that they are lying to you about a lot of things. A lot of shit. Yeah. But, but the fact that they can discredit you on Flat Earth or whatever this guy's putting up means that no one has to listen to you about anything you ask questions And more about. than that, just the institution of social media is completely ruined its reputation because they're just like, yeah, this dude's posting stuff that's obviously fake, obviously not true, making people paranoid so that when something real does come up, they can be like, yeah, but that came from social media. So it's like this. So now, so now this guy is questioning uh, the COVID vaccine on this page where he's also questioning the moon landing and I mean, all but this that's, other but stuff. That's, but that's valid, though. No vax for HIV after 40 years. No vax for cancer after more than 100 years. No vax for the common cold. And yet there's a virus mysteriously appears and within 12 months of it killing Hundreds of thousands of people, there's a vax for it. And, well, that's true. Right. Uh, you should this is that. This is the point, yeah, we're trying to make. It's like, that is something we should actually be thinking about. Huh. Absolutely. But the one right after that is about uh, Bud Light and trans kids. And the one right after that is about Flat, flat Earth, Earth and the map of Flat Earth. So it's like, there is a real thought there, but then it's just, it's covered with a bunch of other garbage. Right, but that's the same thing that the government does to us. Exactly. That, that's what a disinformation they campaign bury is. us yeah. under bullshit. That's disinformation. Yeah. And a PSYOP or a uh, controlled opposition agent is like taking somebody who has established themselves like Alex Jones, like I'm a conspiracy guy, right? Mm -hmm. the, the theory of controlled opposition is that he's working with the government or powers that be to discredit all conspiracy thought because he'll go off and do just the craziest stuff so that when he does stuff that's like not crazy crazy, if he nobody says listens. They're nobody listens, they're turning the listen. frogs gay. They are turning the frogs. They did gay. turn the frogs gay, kind of. They no, that was they a real thing. The, they yeah. turned the frogs. That was gay. a real yeah. thing. What you mean? The frogs was having little drag shows and they was <laughs> falling on the floor. And... I think we talked about this the last time I was not here. Can you imagine? Some, I mean, I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, what the fuck? The frogs are gay. Uh, were, the, the chemical runoff from this factory was changing the sex of the frogs. Right. And the story there isn't that they're turning the frogs gay and it's a conspiracy to like make everybody gay. The conspiracy is that we're letting corporations dump shit into our water that's physically changing the biological makeup of something. And you don't think that it could make us gay too. Right. But him doing that, but him doing that makes you go for the whole thing, just like, well, the, this whole thing is crazy. People still don't believe that that's a real thing. But, but it, it is. is. It and I do have to is. go, but thank he you for having me. Yes, appreciate work. you, Tony.
See? Now, gay frogs, feathered lizards. They're not telling us the real shit, and that's the problem. And we just got to run out here and fuck taxes. You're not getting these taxes till I know what the fuck is going on. It's like, dog, what are you talking about? Taxes? Bro, do you, do you think giants existed? They were in the Bible. I don't know because not every animal is scalable. Like, so when you start to get into humans that are like eight feet tall, they have gigantism. Right. When you start to get that big, uh, a lot of their body parts fail. But so, they're talking about, right. But I mean, but they're talking about, they're not talking about, you know, the bones that they, that they found are bones that the framework could sustain the size. It's a, it's a lot of our organs as well. Now, could have there been a primate that was much bigger? Because like you said before about the gorilla skeleton. Right. It, that can. Uh, we just don't know. Like if we found a, a skeleton of a primate that was very big, we wouldn't have the organs. So then why are they in the Bible and we have to trust what's in the Bible? Why do we have to trust what's in the Bible? Because, I mean, that is... You know the Bible was written by people, and they decided what goes into the Bible <laughs> at the Council of Nicaea. Right, but then we find the bones of the giants, and it's like, well, there it is. It's like it's just like, when do we start believing what they've told us? Like, when does that happen? Here's the thing: is when they do not lie to you a lot, and these things change, and when someone tells you something you actually have to go and try to find it, trace it back to the original source and see if that's corruptible. Because even when they write these newspaper articles, you'll find newspaper articles from like 200 years ago, mm -hmm. and you'll be like, that guy was a journalist. He didn't research this. He doesn't have the qualifications for this. So maybe what he said is true, and maybe it's not. And th that's just one of those things. There's a lot of stuff that we just, we're just not going to know that information. But I think that there is such a huge incentive right now to lie, right? I don't think that there was much of an incentive back then. Of course there was. To lie. Like what? Well, they. Th this is before they had like even um, Social Security or anything. If you didn't make your money, you could have died. Your family could have died. Right. So you got to lie. You got to do whatever it takes to feed your family. More I'm so talking about than, than now. for them to propagate on a grand scale to scare or it was like, what that's, was the point? I mean, that's kind of under the guise of what religion can be broken down into. Not fully. And I'm not saying like religion is just all about lies or whatever. But if you are wanting people to follow a faith, then you will go as far as needed to be if you really want to make people join into other I things. I agree. But I feel like the Bible has such a... has done such a good job of mirroring or... like sound like Joe Biden. It, you know, cuz <laughs> but what I'm saying is like the Bible helps the government to propagate. Like the Bible is on the side of like they don't really fight against what's in the Bible a lot in the government. Like they actually that helps them to keep us, you know what I'm saying? Like that helps to keep people in line like the Bible doesn't say anything about aliens. The Bible doesn't say a lot about... Doesn't the Book of Enoch, but that didn't make it in. It didn't make it into the Bible for well, some that's reason. A, that's, there are a lot of books that did not make it into the Bible, and that in it of itself is a controversy. It is definitely a controversy. The Dead Sea Scrolls, they're finding all of these books that they didn't make it in. Because what are the Dead Sea Scrolls? The Dead Sea Scrolls, and they started finding them, I believe, around the 1930s, is that they found manuscripts in uh, Israel of other books that didn't make it in the Bible. And then there was a huge controversy of who had access to the Dead Sea Scrolls and who who could translate and who could look at them. And only recently, starting in like 1990, were the Dead Sea Scrolls made available for everyone to see and everybody to look at. Of course, it's been, they've been, addend, you know, like they, they well, made shit classified in it. Like they're not just gonna just release shit and be like, here you go. Well, for, for uh, decades, they did not. And now, now they're releasing it. We're seeing a lot of stuff that was not necessarily in the Bible, but they could have put it in the Bible. But they said this, you know, this is a heretical belief. This is a Gnostic belief. That there's a there's a book of Judas that didn't make it in. There's a book of Mary that didn't make it in. There's a lot of apostle books that didn't make it into the Bible. So already, when you're looking at the Bible, you got to think, 
what what am I reading? Because even the Catholic and the Protestant Bible are different. Like remember when um, Joe Biden swore on that big Bible? Yeah. That's a Catholic Bible. So it's different than a Protestant Bible. And what's the Protestant Bible? Like King James type shit? King James. Yeah. Um, but, and then even when you're looking at the Dead Sea Scrolls, they come like this. You had they they were destroyed. A lot of them were destroyed. A lot of, we'll never know what maybe should have gone into the Bible. And they have to fill in these little bits. So that's why, like, even if you're a full believer in Christ, which I respect, that's what you want to do, that's fine. But you also have to understand that there were politics surrounding his death after his death. And it wasn't for 300 years that they actually made the Bible. Like, yeah, there were there's all this stuff in these um in these jars, so and let this me, is really... So let me ask you a question. Do you think that the United States government or the powers that be, because not even... I'm talking about the the world government, is going to propagate a fake alien encounter? Here's my thing on that. What's up? Because, uh... All right. So we, we're seeing a lot of that right now. We see a guy who came out, and he said he knows there's aliens this last week. Mm-hmm. But he didn't provide any evidence for us to see. Right. He didn't provide any evidence. He said, we have the bodies. They, they've they crashed, and we do find dead pilots. That's what he said. Yeah, that's what he said. He he doesn't bring any evidence forth, and the department, I believe it was the Department of Defense, uh, okayed him to go forward and say that. So it's not like he just came out. They they knew what he was going to say, and they gave the okay. So And then we saw this thing in Vegas the other day where they were calling in. They said, an alien crashed in my backyard. I saw a 10-foot creature. Yeah, two of them. I saw it. But they're calling in. Everybody has a cell phone. Nobody got a picture of they it. They said that black cars came and they confiscated the footage that from the backyard people, and they also um, took the craft. That's what they said. That's what they said. Because when we saw the police officer show up, right? But that, he said that I saw that too. But on that Twitter was blacked last night, out. They said that it was you who know. said on Twitter. Here's here's my thing about this: if it happened or if it didn't happen, sometimes we need another goal. Do you know what I mean? Like. Sometimes we need to get to the moon. Sometimes right. we need to to have that goalpost moved back because we as a species are kind of floundering right now and as a country. When America gets together to work together towards something, it's phenomenal what America is able to do. Like these massive projects. And sometimes you need a massive project. Right. So here's what I'm thinking. Maybe they want a space force. And they want to invest trillions of dollars into this. And it's going to get people back on the direction of science and learning and whatever. So if they, if someone decided, hey, let's have a, an invasion, that would do it. Because didn't Reagan say, if there was an alien invasion, we would all get together? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just waiting for more information. I mean, it's just like... I just feel like every civilization that we have record of has been waiting for this. And so why us and why now? It's convenient timing. It's good timing. That's all. You know what I think? I have a small hypothesis, but I think that we're not thinking in the right way to make the contact that we could make. And here's what I've noticed. Like, okay, AI, chat GPT, they're on four right now, right? Four or five is it four? Chappie, the, the, the like level? The, like the level. I think it's four right now. Uh, five is coming out soon. Now, they have... The way that they quantify the intelligence, uh, their quote-unquote horsepower is Einstein IQs, mm-hmm. right? Right now, we're at 10 Einstein IQs for what they feel like the intelligence or the capability or the potential of chat GPT-4, right? That's what they're saying. I don't buy it, but okay. They're saying five is going to be seven times that. I don't buy it, but okay. That's what they're saying. Now, chat GPT, seven times IQ Einstein, right? We didn't know what the fuck Einstein was talking about at one. We didn't know what Einstein was talking about. Like, the average person cannot understand... The E equals MC square, some of the concepts that he was able to unearth. We didn't get it, right? Mm-hmm. We trusted that he was smart enough to understand. I think that AI could develop light speed travel. 
I think that it could begin to ask the questions that we're not even thinking about to lead us down the path of being able to begin to communicate with things that are outside of our spectrum. And I think that it can start asking questions that are going to lead to the big answers. So here's why I don't buy that. I don't know how they're measuring it. I don't either, but that's what they said, though. Because we made a big leap in intelligence with Newton. And so that was how we understood gravity and physics for hundreds of years. And then the next big leap, major leap, came with Einstein, and he did relativity. That was about 100 years ago. We haven't moved past relativity yet. So if they're on chat GPT-4, which they are, just looked it up, you're right, um, where's the next step beyond relativity? That's the thing, though. Like, I mean, the next step beyond relativity is this new AI is really the next step beyond relativity. Well, so so the um, th- that things are relative, that gravity is relative, that the speed uh, of uh, speed is relative, like uh, E equals MC squared. So that that is a big leap because before everyone thought it was just standard it was like flat and he he proved he proved experimentally right and he had he actually said prove my stuff experimentally because i'm just talking shit until you prove it and it right. happened and it and we did have that incredible breakthrough in thinking but we haven't had another breakthrough in thinking like oh, that no, yet give me one second okay so i hear you right we haven't made the jump to something that equals relativity because we can't quantify what the jump is. I think that's even more scary than the jump that we made to relativity because relativity made sense. We needed that. This jump that we're on right now, it's going to supersede us. It's going to put us into, we've never been dumber than the next wave. We've always pushed the next way we, we were a part of it. Einstein is us. Now he's not, we're not him, but he is, he's a human, I think. And, and he was able to push us forward as a human. The fact that they're trying to measure the intelligence of AI through his IQ. And then how many times it's just about how fast he could think what his makeup mentally was to be able to be able to come up with those concepts. And then, what it could do next. We're just not even asking AI the questions that are that that are allowing it to give us answers that are going to go crazy with us. Well, AI is going to search the web for what we know already right. and kind of put it together. The thing about Einstein, he didn't have the highest IQ in the world. IQ is whatever. Like there are a lot of people with IQs higher than Einstein. What he children. had was there are children with IQs. Yeah, it, it, that's not what was magic about Einstein. It was his creativity, right? his ability to play in his brain and then move it back with his intelligence, back and forth with his intelligence. He's not just like, oh, I don't believe in anything, and then I'm going to like, you know, just say whatever. He's not Brock Riddick or whatever, question everything. He could actually do the math and bring it back to the real world and then go and think in these abstract forms and then bring it back. So when you're talking, we're talking about also Newton, like who invented calculus. It- IQ measures like how fast you can do something, spatial awareness, da da da. But that creativity is what is different. And right now, I'm not seeing that the AI has that level of creativity. Maybe it will, but so far, it's just it's just scouring the web for what other people know. Now, this, other people could put something interesting on the web, and they haven't been able to prove it, and it could prove it. So that's something. This guy came from Google. Mm-hmm. This is this is one of the Google whistleblowers who was the developer, one of the developers of AI. They all left because they're all so afraid of what's about to happen. Yeah. Elon Musk has said, Elon Musk said, <laughs> well, that they're trying they're trying to make a, a super intelligence that is much smarter than us. And that, that's scary. But how can it be much smarter than us? It's just going to have, imagine a machine that thinks you're right, thinks I'm right, thinks Amir is right, thinks Tony is right, thinks Brennan is right. So it's willing to argue all the points because it has every single point of view at a snap. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. 
That's a big deal to develop. Like that's not something to be sneezed at. No, not at all. And the AI could put put a lot of people out of business. Might put the coders out of business, the doctors out of business. They uh they asked Chat GPT to make a macaroni and cheese. Did mm-hmm. you see that? No, what did it do? What kind of cheese? It, it, it? They said it made the best macaroni and cheese in the world. And it like it took all the different recipes. It like had all the cheeses. Um it like even made like a a onion garlic jam that similar to French onion soup that was like and it's just like it's one of those things where it's like damn like this recipe belongs to this recipe is like DNA it has a little piece of all the recipes that they could find online yeah it it went and it found it, but it, but it, but it found like okay if 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 85% of all mac and cheese recipes use heavy whipping cream mm-hmm. then automatically that becomes a staple mm-hmm. so then it's okay well how much is too much salt well on average, it's like it's too much salt, little salt, da, 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 this many pinches of salt. Then it's, you know, what cheese is? Uh, and, and it's like, what this is doing is this is this is like the new internet. This is like internet as a person almost. Yeah. Like this is this is internet personified. What it's yeah, what it's doing is taking what's out there and bringing it together and averaging but that's it but out. that's all we do though. Like we take what what we've been taught and then we go out into the world. We grow up; these things become our opinions and our beliefs, and then we go out into the world and we stand on it. We test it. That's the difference between us and Chappie. Not everybody we, tests we test it. it. Not everybody tests it. We well, we can taste, so we can say this tastes. Oh good yeah, 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 yeah. We can taste the mac and cheese, but I'm talking about like, you know, we are taught. You know, like they got little kids that's acting like you ever see them videos which i think is very creepy of like a little child and they got it preaching in the church and the child is like and god said it's like this is a fucking kid he don't even know what he's saying yeah well a lot of people do that it's acting it's it, that's acting classes but that's all people are doing is just acting like they know the president is acting like the president he doesn't i mean like what 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 are you really there, because we've if you had have some good presidents, okay, but that's fine. They're still acting like no, nobody. There is there's no set way to do it. There's no set way to do it. But we've had presidents who respond to um, challenges and and have done really well. I think Lincoln but they're acting is acting well though. Like there is no like what I'm saying is like we're all human beings. You're See, just a human being. That's true. No, I, I know what you're saying, and you're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. Thank you, Maya. I, I every now and then. I get one of these from Maya when she says I'm not wrong. That's a big deal because you'd be like, you're fucking stupid. You don't, you believe in everything they tell you. So I, I appreciate that. I needed that for my self esteem. I'm driving home like, all right, go ahead. You're not wrong on that front. But where I'm going to support humans is not every human is like that. And these people who are acting are often mimicking the people that are great people. And those are usually the people that go the furthest because unfortunately you know what I'm saying because it's like well because it's like you know it's like fake it till you make it but then it's not even like once you make it you see that it's just been fake the whole time nothing is everything is a construct that we have designed to follow and that's where I'm going to fight you because you're saying it in absolutes there are people who are faking it, and they will get far. It's like we talked about the Turing test last week, where it's, it judges our ability to tell authenticity. My bad, my bad. The, it judges our ability to tell who's authentic from not. And most people can't tell who's authentic. So right. you, look at, you look at some presidents, and they're mimicking good presidents. But then you look, we've had, we've had legitimately good presidents. Like FDR was a good president. He, he made the United States better. L- Abraham Lincoln was a good president. He was crazy. He was he would fight you in a minute, and he was probably addicted. Uh, <laughs> he had, Abe, you used to scrap like that. He was like a fighter. Abraham Lincoln used to fight everybody when he was younger. He would uh, a wrestler before there was wrestling. He would just wow. fight people. His wife would fight people. He was a nutcase. Wild motherfucker. Yeah, he was wild, super wild. Uh, but he was a good president, and no one no one thought that this man like he was a diamond in the rough. But do you understand that? And so I call these people the anchor points. Yeah. Right? And because now you have a bunch of people that, whether 
advertently or inadvertently are acting like him. They want to act like him, right? People, you know, like we are, we do so much monkey see, monkey do to the point where you could damn near trace all of this traits back to the original person who decided that's how he was going to be. The first guy to wear the baggy jean, the first guy to be a gentleman, the first guy to show some kind of chivalry, right? And then people saw that worked, and then that became the ladies' man, and then the ladies' man is a way to be. That mm. becomes a new, um, a, a new build, a new prototype, a new. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, uh, you look at the the baseball players that chew the gum and spit the thing in the thing, and it's like. Y'all saw somebody that don't even got nothing to do with baseball skill, but it plays into the part of hell, you know, a scooter, ping, you know what I'm saying? It just becomes synonymous with what it means to be that. And so that's what I mean when I say people are acting, everybody is going along with what I like to refer to as a program. People are kind of subscribing to a program that they seem to like. And then they'd be like, cool, this is how I'm going to play. This is how I'm going to talk. This is how I'm going to walk. These are the shoes I'm going to wear. This is the kind of guy or girl that I'm going to be. Yeah. And that's just what it is. There's a, a good book called Presentation of Self in Everyday Life. And that's basically, it's a, it's a sociology staple. And it is how we choose our character and how we choose uh, the role we're going to play through the rest of our lives. And that's what most people do. And the people who stand out from that the people who decide to be unique and not just play a role, they usually suffer heavy consequences from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, because originality is um, nothing but a brand new program. And you're not going to stay original. You may, but people are going to copy you. And then you're going to be washed away and nobody's going to remember you. Somebody's going to do you better than you've ever done you. Yeah, because they have, they get to see you they get and to then see improve. You, and then they get to improve it. And that's that's one of the scary things about all of this is that like to bring it back to flat earth, you know, it's not that I necessarily believe that the earth is flat, but it's just crazy how maybe a person decided to say it and then it got ran with and then graphics were created to illustrate and strengthen the argument. Then from that, it becomes fact the people who have only seen that and who you know and, and then it, it just it goes and goes and goes and now you're people in power who who control the media right now the number one show in the world game of thrones has an ice wall and beyond that ice wall is prehistoric things right and it's like well now what you've done through live action and cinematography and manipulation is you've shown people how it is theoretically possible and then you tell people that with their minds, they can create anything. Mm -hmm. So now they can't be wrong because they can think it. If you can think it, then quote unquote, then it can be. And then if it can be, I mean, it's like the shit just goes on and on to the point where it's like, well, a fact is just something that enough people to believe, enough people believe that no one can tell them that it's wrong. Well, that's not true. A fact, a fact can be proven experimentally. I mean, you but say that, but like, say. tell somebody that God is not a fact. Well, that's not what a fact is. That's a that's faith. You have to have faith in God. No, right. But I'm saying though, like, but enough people point. have faith that it's like having faith is the fact. Well, what what well, what is faith? Well, he becomes a, then God becomes a tulpa. And what a tulpa. is faith though? Faith is believing beyond fact. And how do you how do you show faith? You get together and you act. Everything is shown through action. Right. So you don't care, right? Like you don't care. Like faith is not fighting the tide, right? Faith is like God got it. God said, you know, everything he got said, everything was going to happen. So he knew everything was going to happen. So it's like, well, then why do catastrophes happen? Well, because God said that it was going to be. That's the faith. It's like, what are you talking about? You're, you're being mentally lazy. Sometimes you got to be. Ah, oh, man. And that's that's the thing. That's having that's that's being satisfied with band-aid answers and stopping the questions. Yeah, uh, yeah. And no, and I agree with that, but I'll defend people who believe in God and believe in religion and stuff. It does make them stronger. Because they can just say God got it and have faith 
and then move forward and, with action. So I mean, you were saying the difference between a fact and uh, faith. Basically, you're absolutely right, especially we get the secret stuff where, you know, believe it, you know, and it becomes true. That is that is not true. But that is kind of the mentality that's been in our society for the past 20 years. This is what I'll say about God, religion and church. If God forgives all. Then God does not need to be recognized and worshipped because God just is. Everything that is, is supposedly because of God. So the fact that you are, is you doing your job in what God has, quote unquote, planned for you. That's what they say. Right. But that's not what they practice. Right. What they practice is they want to go to these third world countries and teach them about God because then they can monetize the belief and make them sacrifice something that they feel important to them to show God how much you know, and it's like, well, but the idea of God doesn't even care about, like, what could you sacrifice to God? Like, what, what, if God gave you everything and everything is meant for you to sustain on it, then why would he want it back so that he can, you can prove to him that you believe in him? Like, he needs anything that he gave you. You have a child. Imagine if, you fed your child, let's say you pump breast milk, put it into a bottle, and then you fed your child. Your child then threw up half of that milk, put it into a bottle, and gave to you as a gift because it appreciates. Then you're like, stop fucking doing that. Take these nutrients so you can fucking grow. Why are you giving me the milk back? That's not how this goes. Yeah, I created you, but I don't need you to pay it back because I didn't have to fucking create you. Like, like I, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like people don't even understand that the concept of what they're giving everything to the construct is saying, you don't even have to do this, but let, but let the story of Abraham who didn't want to sacrifice his kid. Right. Or the story of Job, who we talked about last week, who didn't want to feel like he was questioning God. It's like, God, why the fuck would you bless me with all this shit and then let the devil come fuck it up to prove a point? That's very destructive. That doesn't even, that sounds like something that a human would do. Mm -hmm. Humans have something to prove. Mm -hmm. Humans have quarrels with, within themselves about who deserves what more. People will take God and a lot of things are just what people use to justify what they already want. So God is something different to everybody, which is why, like, when people start talking about it, I'm just like, you know, don't talk about politics or religion. That's, that's, uh, that's what you want to do. That's okay. It is by design that we don't know who, what, where, and why God is. It is by design. So you everything so? else. That's interesting. Everything else is just people making shit up to make themselves seem better than the next person. If you talk to a church person, they would have you believe that they go into a better heaven than you. Like, 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 like heaven got a little velvet rope and they finna be in VIP because they wasn't fucking or because they didn't choose to smoke any weed or eat anything. You know, it's like, what the fuck are we doing for real? Like, for real? Like, when are we going to grow up as, as a race of people and be like, what, what are, what are we really doing? Well, we can talk about this next week. Yeah, we can. But I do have to say when religion went out the door... And we decided we would become new atheists, like a new atheist movement. It's not that we got rid of religion. We just replaced it with something else. And now we have a new religion, which is uh, which is interesting. I'm all for religion. I'm just not for the stupidity. Okay. I want to believe in everything. But I think that the people who are down here trying to explain some bullshit to me are stupid. And they would... The more questions you ask, the more angry they become. Just like you asking them, them people who supposedly landed on the moon. So wait a minute, why the shoes don't matter? Look, motherfucker, we did it. And it's like, all right, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't do shit. That's why. It's like, it's like, man. People are afraid of there being nothing for them. 
People are afraid of this being the thing. People are afraid to do something with their life for real, because then if they don't do that, if they sacrifice all of this, then they can do it in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Why would God let you come to heaven and fuck 17 virgins? Like, why would he do that? Some pervert thought about that. And it's like, but why would he, why would he purposely tell you not to have sex before marriage when the idea of humans predates the idea of marriage? We talk about marriage too, because you don't want to, back in the day before they had birth control, a girl better be married. Yeah. She's going to have a baby. I mean, uh, that's 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 on her. Her job is to have a baby. Her job on this planet, I mean, is 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 don't look at her. Look at every other female species of anything on this planet. Like they all, unless you a fucking seahorse, they all get pregnant. They all create the next generation of life, and that's what it is. But somehow we turned it into a rite of passes. We turned it into you have the right. To if you do it right. It's like, what are you talking about? This is what life is. This is what life... Tell that to a dog. Yeah, but a man's got to stick around for his baby, not like a dog. A dog can go. Like, hey, man, he, if you own the dog sure and you man. own the puppies, he'll raise them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Ruh, 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 don't, don't do that. You know, that, that ain't how you get a snack. Your dog... A dog will teach some puppies how to fuck the beat. I'm sorry. We losing Patreon because y'all getting mad at me. Look, dog, I'm going to tell you what it is, man. I'm never going to... Um, act like I know all the facts and I feel like that's all this church shit is. They know everything and it's not fair. It's not mm-hmm. fair that they're they're taking it. They don't know. And it's big business for them to know. Oh yeah, they make a lot of, of money. Of course they make a lot they make of money. So much money. How much money does God need? <laughs> How much money, money does God need? God should be rich as fuck. <laughs> How much money does God need? Hey, man, my name is CP. This has been another episode of the CP Podcast. It is always the questions, never the answers. If I offended you, fucking good. We out of here.